Welcome back guys, my name is Gareth, this is Tech Check. And if you like the review of this particular monitor, 4K, 144Hz, IPS and FreeSync, £279, there was a few drawbacks. We identified them, we've put it clear in the video. Undeniable value for money here, then you're going to love this one. Because we've got another monitor from Electric as well. This time, still 4K, still 144Hz. And it's 32 inch as well. Still free sync, but there's one added benefit. Stick with me, we'll find out together. So while the other monitor guys offered fantastic value for money, we did uncover a few issues. I'm hoping this particular monitor can eradicate those. And the most important one being that 4K 144 Hertz with one HDMI 2.1 cable. And that's right guys, this particular monitor has got that. So for anyone that's looking at an Xbox, a PlayStation 5, looking for an affordable 4K monitor, then this could be right up your street. So today we're going to unbox it. We're going to have a quick look at it. We're going to actually hook it up to my 3090 uh, gaming PC. Then we're going to actually hook it up to an Xbox Series X and just test out a few of the features there. We're going to have a look at the HDR. We're actually going to look at the color bleed. We're going to have a look at the, the colors itself as well. And then right at the end, Hopefully, I'll be able to give you that seal of approval. It's actually worth every single penny. So stick with me. Let's get into it. So we'll start with the unboxing, guys. We'll get that out of the way. I've not seen this particular monitor yet. So we'll get it out of the box. We'll get it onto the table. And I'll give you an idea of what's actually in the box. We are limited for somewhat of space here as well. So I'll try and do it as quickly as possible. So there we go, guys. Quick and dirty unboxing, except for the monitor that's still in this polystyrene. They do provide us with an HDMI 2.1 cable, which is there. We've got the power brick, which is, or looks like it, yeah, it's five volts or 120 watt in terms of output. We have our UK plug, which is there. We've got a quick start guide, some energy rating certificates here and bits and bobs. We've got one screw, and that looks to actually secure the base to the actual stem of the actual uh, stand itself, which is reduced from two down to one, which is good. Now, the most positive thing to see is they've actually gone for a toolless uh, connection from the back of the monitor to the actual stand itself. And I'll show you more in detail, but essentially there's a little spring-loaded catch here. You press that down, you slot these two in like that, you press this down, you pull it down, and that will lock it into place there, which is positive upgrade from the 27 inch more budget version. So the stand itself, guys, does feel a little bit, well, not the best. Now it is solid metal, which is really good. The base as well as the stand, uh, that is gonna cause a few chippings or scratches as and when you obviously come to uh, put it together. So just be mindful of that. So dead straightforward. What you can do is just turn that over, get yourself a screwdriver, and then we can just screw that into the base. Now, what I would say is that's now gone really nice, firm and sturdy. Feels much more premium than the previous stand, even though that was adequate. So this screen does feel a little more premium as well, guys. The, you've still got this larger bezel at the bottom. We've still got these near enough invisible bezels at the side and at the top. I really do like that. And obviously for me, the larger real estate in terms of screen size is also a massive benefit as well. Let's get it onto the stand. Let's test out that quick toolless mechanism. So that went pretty straightforward. We'll flick up this. Now, I don't know whether that is fully in. Yes, that looks more, there we go. So you've got to be careful there, guys. Just make sure when you push that in and you push it all the way back to the back, you do actually just push this switch all the way down to lock it into position. So now that we've actually got it on its base and stand, guys, there's a couple of things that I want to point out for you. As you can see, you can quite clearly tilt the monitor up or down. Now, that's actually going to be 
the maximum that you can actually do with this particular stand. Unlike the other one where you could rotate it, you could tilt it and you could obviously turn it. With this particular one, it will not rotate. It will not twizzle. It will not bend. It will not do anything except for just in and out like so. Okay. It's a static base, so it doesn't go up and down. It doesn't rotate and it doesn't allow much more maneuverability or flexibility than that. Um, so if you are looking to do that, just be mindful. Then it does support vaser mounting. So if you do want to wall mount it and stuff like that, then that would be your best option. But this particular stand, whilst it offers a more sturdy uh, base because it's a much bigger screen, it does limit its, uh, shall we say, flexibility in terms of being able to move it and do what you want with it as well. So be aware of that. So let's move on to the display inputs of this particular monitor, guys. And you'll be fantastically pleased to know that we have got two HDMI inputs and we've got two DisplayPort inputs. Those DisplayPort inputs are DisplayPort 1.4, which is absolutely fantastic. But more importantly, for you next generation console players and obviously new 3000 generation graphics cards, it has got the HDMI 2.1. So what we were missing from the previous monitor, 144Hz, 4K, we can actually achieve that now with one HDMI 2.1 cable. And that's included in the actual box as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually plug it in, we're gonna turn it on, we're gonna hook it up to my 3090, which is behind us. We're gonna actually just have a look at a bit of the video. We're gonna see whether if we connect it via an HDMI 2.1, we can get everything up and running and just make sure that it's really easy to use. So there we have it guys. Plug the HDMI 2.1 cable in, comes up straight away. No issues, no problems. A couple of things to mention. The power brick feels a lot better quality uh, than the previous one. It is obviously supporting a larger screen. It does do 120 watts, five amps as well. So that is much, much better. So straight out the box guys, now I've changed the actual uh, scaling settings down to 100%. You can see we're at 3840 by 2160, which is the recommended there. And as I said, we can, if we want to downscale this, you can play it at 1440p or at 1080p. Why you would do that, I don't know. But let's say you have a graphics card and it can't quite push the pixel rate of this, but you wanted to upgrade to a 4K monitor because you're thinking about upgrading your graphics card, for instance, or investing in the latest console, then it could be a wise investment. So 3840, 2160, let's just go down to our advanced display settings. Our current standard refresh rate is 60 Hertz. Now, hey, there we go. So we can put it at 144 Hertz straight out the box with the HDMI 2.1. Let's see if it works. Keep the changes, there we go. So there we go, guys. Now, one thing to note here, I have noticed is that whilst it's 8-bit, it's 144 hertz and it's uh, 3840 by 2160, the color space is still in SDR. So going into the advanced section, guys, as you can see here, we've got an overdrive function. You can change the aspect ratio. You've got a variable refresh rate. You've got free sync on and off in here as well that you can actually go in and do that. What we can also do is you can go into the actual Ultra H, uh, HDR. You can turn on a HDR in here, which is something we didn't do previously. So it's great to see that you can actually force that. You can change the darks, the sharp, enhance, and the HDR contrast also. You can change the position of the on-screen display, the language, the transparency, and also LED on and off. One of the other functions on the back of this, and I'll give you a, a bit of a heads up on it very shortly, is it's got a little bit of RGB lighting to the back of the monitor also. It has got onboard speakers as well, guys. So again, I would always say, if you've got a set of headphones or you've got external speakers, that will be much better quality, but we will test out the onboard speakers to this monitor also. You can also come in and change whether you want it in game mode, movie mode, photo mode, etc., etc. So one thing I'm really pleased to notice now, guys, is we've gone into the OSD and we've turned on HDR and then we've come back into the graphics settings. And as you can clearly see up here, we're still running at 144 Hertz. We're still running at 4K. And the good news is now we are running in HDR mode rather than SDR mode. So real positive that guys. So you benefit from brighter brights and darker darks by having HDR enabled. 
So what we've actually done now guys is we've just uploaded a YouTube 4K video. I just want to give you an indication of what the quality is going to be like, what the color uh, is going to be like and actually in the background you can actually hear the volume from this particular speaker and whilst it's not horrendous or terrible you are going to benefit from some external speakers or headphones much better over the internal speakers of this particular monitor but with that being said if you have no external speakers or any sound system or anything like that then it would be better than nothing you can really start to see where HDR plays over SDR and you start seeing where that money is actually spent because the picture quality on this guys even from this angle is absolutely fantastic and bearing in mind this is still i'll get on to cost a little later on nowhere near the the cost of the more expensive 4k 144 hertz monitors either now that we've confirmed everything works guys in terms of 4k 144 hertz free sync hdr all with an hdmi 2.1 Let's go ahead, hook it up to one of the latest gen consoles, Xbox Series X, and make sure everything works there as also. One thing that I did forget to mention, guys, is whilst we've been utilizing HDMI 2.1 cable, you can actually achieve 4K 144Hz, albeit in SDR mode with a DisplayPort 1.4 cable as well. The only downside here is if you're looking to connect to one of the latest consoles, then you won't be able to do that unless you've got an HDMI 2.1 cable. So you wouldn't actually believe, guys, what I've actually had to just go through in order to get this Xbox. It's 20 past 11 at night. I've had to creep up the stairs with a two-year-old and a nine-year-old asleep. I've, I felt like Santa Claus. I've just had to nick it out of his bedroom to come and test it because this is the only time that it'll allow me to have it. So we're privileged. So HDMI 2.1 cable, guys. Let's plug that one in. Whew, with a little bit of luck, let's turn it on. Let's see if everything works. So enable advanced video features, yes please. So keep these settings, uh, allow variable refresh rate. Your display will go back to the last setting in 20 seconds. Let's keep the new settings and then we'll just have a look in the settings, what we've actually changed them to. So there we go, guys. We can change it to 120 Hertz. 4K Ultra HD, no problem whatsoever. As you can see there, your TV is currently in HDR mode, so we can actually go ahead and calibrate it in HDR if we wish to do so. The biggest thing for me, guys, was to show you that 4K, Ultra HD, 120 hertz, HDMI 2.1, in here, no problems whatsoever. And you can quite clearly see it's no problem at all. So the big question then, guys, how much is it? So the previous one I actually found on Amazon for 399, but you could actually get it for 299 and even at 279 from alternate vendors, which are listed in the description down below as well. Now, this one's a slightly different. You do get a larger screen. You get all of the added benefits that you got with the 27 inch one, plus with the added benefit of HDMI 2.1 and HDR as well. Now, all said and all done, this monitor is £499 and I still think that is an absolute bargain, okay? So comparable to, I would say somewhere around seven £750 for the next level of 4K 144Hz and you are going to be getting something like HDR600, HDR800 for that amount of money as well. So just bear that in mind. But when you take into consideration a monitor that's 32 inch, it's 4K, it's 144 hertz, it's an IPS screen, it has got free sync, it's got HDR, it's got HDMI 2.1. I think this is a pretty, pretty good value prospect for anyone that's running these latest consoles or thinking of upgrading to 
uh, well, from a 1080p monitor or 1440p monitor because they've upgraded their PC or got a more powerful graphics card as well. So, guys, I'm hoping you've seen some value in the video. If you have, smash that subscriber button. Don't forget to like the videos because most people like them. You don't leave a like rating. It's absolutely free and it really helps me out to spread to, uh, to the larger community as well. So if you have, smash that like button as well, guys. It's much appreciated. Take care. Have a lovely weekend. And I hope to see you again. All the very best.